online, on digital, and on 88 to 91 FM. BBC Radio 2. Going up with Alan Carr, yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. Hello, I'm Alan Carr. And I'm Melanie Sykes. And you're listening to Going Out with Alan Carr. Now, we're going to be honest with you, we are... Uh, in, in shock and we're devastated like you are. But uh, me and Mel are going to try and give you the best show we can. We're going to lift your spirits, yeah. aren't we? Terrible news today, that. Yeah. But we're going to have a good show. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And uh, we're going to miss you, Amy. Thunder in my heart, then Leo Sayer. Now, here. Did what? you see Wendy Deng? Oh. I've got to bring this up. Wendy Deng. Oh, it was amazing. What morning was it this week? I can't remember. I it just... was in the afternoon. Was it in the afternoon? Well, I saw the footage in the following morning then. Oh, right. And I saw it with the sound down, and I just saw this woman launching herself, and I just thought it was amazing that somebody would instinctively yeah, just yeah. would defend her man. I absolutely loved but it. But she came out of nowhere. Yeah. Do you see the headline in the Times? It was like, uh, Crouching Wendy, Hidden Tiger. <laughs> Did you see? It was amazing. <laughs> but, I mean, I'd love someone to do that for me. Do you know what I mean? It's so nice. It just jumped up. Yeah, I think I would uh, instinctively be the same with anybody yeah. I care about or love. I think I would do exactly... I'd do it for people. I would do it for somebody I didn't know. If somebody's been picked on or I see some injustice, yeah. I'd probably... I'd probably do exactly the same. But, I mean, you've got to ask about security, haven't oh, you? That. Someone going in there with a cream pie. <laughs> What's that for? Or I might get hungry during the case. <laughs> I mean, it's so passive aggressive, isn't it? I mean, it's just fire, whatever it is. It's just in case Rupert Murdoch gets hungry. <laughs> oh, come on through. Why don't you sit at the front so you can hand it to him? Oh, dear. I give oh, up again. But, but it, but it made me think about yeah. is there any of our listeners, are they are they one of these Amazonian women yes. that defend their husbands? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You Be know. nice to hear the stories of that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, is your husband a, a shrinking violet? Have you had to defend his honour when he had sand kicked in his face <laughs> on the beach? <laughs> are you the one who has to take the spider out of the bath? Oh, who is. wears the trousers? Well, you know, just on the way here, my boyfriend was driving us here and he won't bib anybody in the car, whereas I get serious road rage so i'm always on the horn you know beep, beep, you're always beep, on the horn <laughs> oh, good for you oh, no. oh no. how have we been on air <laughs> you said it love oh, <laughs> no i know, I know what, what you meant you know uh, what uh, I, so uh, uh, yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> with any luck <laughs> Oh, dear. Anyway, can I finish my fucking story? <laughs> well, so, yes. Yeah, so... When you drag it back out of the gutter, you can. <laughs> it's actually too deep now, forget it. <laughs> if you were that man that saw Mel on the horn, give us a ring and let us know about her. Oh, no, anyway, so he's driving and he will not press the button, and I'm just getting more and more cross because I'm desperate to get to work. And anyway, I, I basically tooted yeah, the horn yeah. and he moved out of the way. You see, I don't like any confrontation. As you no, know, I you know, know I run away. We're very He's... different like yeah, that, aren't yeah, we? Like, I yeah. love a rock. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, and also, I was on uh, uh, Twitter today, because you know we talked about Tales of the Unexpected <laughs> last you've week. you've been yeah? saying that I would be the naked woman at the front. Yes, you know, yes. Flames. And everyone has gone crazy, yeah. and they want us to bring it back. Yes. And for you to do yeah, the naked, the naked dancing. dancing. But it made me also think about something for you uh, to phone in, our listeners. Did anyone in your family work on an old 70s or 80s show? Maybe they were the grip on Bullseye or perhaps they operated the puppets on 70s kids show Pipkins. Let us know. And Would who you... was the lady that danced naked yes. for the titles? If yes. you're that lady and you're listening, please let us know. And we want to know gossip as well, because I, like, I watch... Um, Bullseye, you know, they have reruns of it. Oh, do they? But maybe you know the man who did the... <laughs> you know, like when um, Bully was on the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that's how my brain sounds when I'm <laughs> reading some of these emails. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, and also, yeah. did you help uh, pull out one of the speedboats? Or, or, or did you, like, make Dusty Bin on 3, 2, 1? Oh, I used to love that yeah. show. So that's 
what I want to know. Yeah, cool. What's your 70s or 80s claim to fame? And, uh, well, I'll read this out in a minute. We'll have a bit more music. But, uh, yeah, give us a ring on 0500 281 Calls are free from the BT landline. Other networks may vary and calls from mobiles may cost more. You can text us now on 88 to 91. Texts will be charged at your standard network rate. And you can email us at alan.car at bbc.co.uk. And remember, everyone who appears on air will get a going out with Alan Carr Rosette. <laughs> That was Pixie Lock there. Hi, Alan and Mel. You were talking of coincidences last week. And hey, I live in Norwich and got to see you last night. Alan and you were fantastic. So funny. And your dogs are. Oh. Your two dogs came on stage with me. Did they? Yeah. What did they do? Well, they don't do anything. They're not like, um... Performing. Where'd that noise come it from? It was my mic. It seemed to be up in the air and I've put, pulled it down. It needs oiling, basically, the, oh. the thing. It's a bit... Yeah, yeah. stiff and everything. <laughs> yeah, it's... <okay. laughs> so I went on stage and I had me dogs. So... And they don't do anything. Well, they just sat there while you did your act. No, they were put on because I mentioned uh, me dogs in me act. OK. And oh, so I they... See yeah, this. yeah. But it weren't like gin or, you know, gin the dancing dog. They just sort <laughs> of uh, sat there and then... I think someone had, was eating a bacon sandwich, so they sort of ran off. But, I mean, it was nice to have them on. It gets an R. Oh, go, ah. yeah, of course. Well, anyway, Claire's been in touch. She's the one who lives in Norwich. Yeah. Anyway, last week you were talking about Tales of the Unexpected, which was made by Anglia Television here in Norwich. My dear mum, who passed away two years ago, Audrey Miller, was the makeup artist on some of the tales, and she made up Joan Collins. Um, oh, my you know, goodness! Yes, who still have still have Mum's continuity uh, photos of Joan with her head through the sculpture. Do you remember the one I was talking yes, about? Yes, yes. And they had to grease it up with lard, and and then they cut her head off in the end. Oh, my gosh, yeah. that's amazing! And yes, so there knows all of these. That's what made me think maybe some people, you know, worked on some old shows and they can give us some uh, little insight into yeah. it. So, uh, so that's Claire, brilliant show, and she loves it. So, uh, yeah, that's interesting. I'm, I'm It's great. So, yes. I've, I've got some birthdays and things here. Shall I do them? Yeah, go for it. Please, could you say happy birthday to my daughter, Hannah? She was 19 yesterday, and I know she'd love to hear you say happy birthday to her. We listen every week, and you never fail to get us laughing. Thanks a lot, and that's from Jane. So, happy, happy birthday, Hannah. And I've got one here. Hi, Alan and Mel. Could you please wish my mum, Vi, a happy 75th birthday for tomorrow, Sunday the 24th? She will be surprised to hear her name mentioned. Love the show. You two always make me laugh. Cheers. Oh, is this a joke? What? He's called Mark King and his mum's called Vi. Viking. <laughs> is that a joke? Uh, Are you I, genuinely uh, Viking? Yeah, I wonder. <laughs> is she I wearing wonder. a hat with two arms on the top? <laughs> Is she, is she in a longboat? <laughs> Are you sure? No, I don't know, because if it's a birthday, I feel awful. No. But Viking, happy 75th. <laughs> Oh, dear me. Hi, Alan. Please say hello to my sister, Caroline. Better better make it earlier. She's just about to start on the side. Give her half an hour and she'll be anyone's. And that's from <laughs> Mary. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, uh, as well as your um, stories about your 70s, uh, 80s shows you've worked on and your uh, Amazonian... What, what's the thing? How do you describe it? Women, not battle axes. Like that's not ninja fair. Ninja-type women. Nin Ninjas. Is your wife a ninja? <laughs> Ring in. <laughs> Women, like powerful women that will defend the husband, you know, yeah. if you have to step in and sort something out because the man in your life just can't handle it. Yeah, and we're talking about your, if your husband looks a bit like Tom, who won The Apprentice, Mr Muscle. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Is your husband a bit like that? <laughs> and then you have to stand in and, like, help him. Yeah, we want to yeah. know your stories. Because, you know, my mum, I mean, my dad is useless is at it? DIY and everything. Oh, it was right. always my mum who put up shelves and was moved it? cabinets and everything. Because, you know, people are all, you know, what are you going to get your dad? And, like, you think, like, a... A, a, a power tool. A, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like, my mum was, like, you know, it was... Her he used it all the time, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, but you've got to. I mean, I, 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 you know, I said I like doing flat packs and all that. Oh, yeah. I because can't my ex husband, it. the thing is, I think men generally don't like looking at um, how to do things. You know, you get that, the instruction <laughs> yeah. manual, because they won't look. They think. I'm the same. Even like, you know, in IKEA when it's just two bits of paper. <laughs> and you're like, oh, no. It's so boring. But I like doing that because like, it's like a big jigsaw puzzle, isn't it? I never really see it like that. I see it more as hard work. <laughs> 
Well, I, I kind of like all that stuff. Yeah. But a lot of women have to do it because the men in their lives are just useless, as you yeah. said. Yes, yeah, so that's what we want to know. And also, if you know nothing at all about the telly, then you sound the perfect person <laughs> to play our telly quiz. And you can win a Going Out with Alan Carr rosette. Full terms and conditions for the quiz are available on our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash radio 2. And if your entire life has been a total wardrobe disaster, call us for help before you leave the house. The number is 0500 281 the text is 8891, and the email is alan.car at bbc.co.uk. But also let us know what you're doing. Are you having a barbecue, a curry? Are you staying in? Are you maybe doing some flat pack furniture? Maybe Mel could come round and help you. <laughs> Who knows? 0500 281 Hi, um, you know we're talking about when the wife steps in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, both whilst out walking with my husband, a loose dog came along. My husband <laughs> pulled me in front of him to protect himself <laughs> in case the dog attacked. That's from Jill. <gasps> oh, Jill! Oh, that's terrible! Chivalry is dead! I wonder what kind I'm... of dog it was. <laughs> Don't say poo. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad. If it's a chihuahua, can you imagine it? Oh, I'd have to divorce him immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jill, that's funny, though. Uh, Alan, you know you say you'd love somebody to protect you. Well, <laughs> Alan, I would protect you and be your Wendy Ninja, love from <laughs> Chloe. Oh, so thanks, you've got Chloe. somebody there. <laughs> um, hi, it's not a defence story, but hubby earns far more than me, yet hasn't got a clue how to get access to money in the bank. Mind you, what's that then? I suppose that's pin number, isn't it? Pin oh, numbers, no. remembering pin numbers. There's so many pin numbers you have to remember these days. Oh, I, I've, I've only got one credit card and I can't remember the pin number for it and it's driving me mad. And I know you're not supposed to do this and I'm not condoning it, but, I mean, I can see the sense when people write it on the card because there's so <laughs> many. I know, don't do it. Radio 2 says do not do that. No. But you know when they get told off. But, I mean, there's but so I, many. I have a technique for that, but if I tell you, then somebody might need no, me back no, and don't, I can't. Don't, but well, yeah, but my memory, I just don't possess one. And it's not even that I why? had one. It's honestly... Catalogue debt. <laughs> Is that why you haven't got one? Is it catalogue debt? <laughs> oh, it's a bit of a sore yeah, subject. Let's, let's not go, though. <laughs> You're not even called Melanie Sykes. <laughs> She's on the run from Kay's catalogue. <laughs> I used to model for Kay. Really? I did. I bet I've seen you. Yeah, my honest... mum always got Kay. Yeah, you would have seen me. Honestly, I used to sell loads what did you of clothes. Do? What did you do? Oh, we had to, we had to wear some funny stuff. Because it was always... Because I was only in my 20s when I was yeah. modelling it. But it was also for older women. So you were wearing quite mature outfits. Yeah. So and, um, if you got the big page, you know, you used to have loads of little pictures of models. Yeah. If you got the big page, you were onto something. So really, would you be like, na 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 Yeah, na. I got the biggest picture on the spread. <laughs> I'm wearing a twin set. <laughs> la, la, la. I dread to see some of them pictures. You would laugh oh. so much. Because it was proper catalogue posing as well. You oh, know? like pointing at something pointing in the distance. Pointing at things, sharing, laughing in somebody's ear and all that. It's just. Oh. But we was a good laugh though. We I might have really... a little uh, rifle through me old oh, case no. catalogue. <laughs> see if I can see Mel from yesteryear. <laughs> Please don't do it. Please uh, don't do it. Um, my uncle, Jim Dunn, made the bronze bullies for Bullseye in the 80s. Did he? They were a special prize given away to the professionals. He's sadly no, sadly no longer with us from Simon Bay in Devizes, Wiltshire. But do you remember, I, I love bully. And he'd go, I'll just give you like, was it third? No, when you go to the break, two minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back in two minutes. I'll just count this money out, didn't it? <laughs> oh, yes, he did, yeah. didn't he? Oh. I'm making Jim Bowen sound a bit sinister there, but he was like... <laughs> Yeah, come back in two minutes. And he'd be counting, like, licking his fingers and counting yeah. the notes. Do you remember the non-darts players? They were rubbish. <laughs> they were awful. Yeah, and they'd, like, throw it and they'd go in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been watching the darts. Do you ever watch the darts? It's been on all week. There's a big championship going on. Oh, you, you don't, don't have to do some boring stuff, I Melanie. There's nothing boring about darts. The audiences Flat are having it large. Flat furniture and darts are two of the <laughs> worst things in the world. They are not. They are not. Honestly, it's so exciting. And I just love that the guys, they don't have to be fit, do they? They just basically have to drink loads of ale, get themselves a nice big belly, yeah. and then just shoot some arrows. I mean, it's brilliant. What but a great sport. But there's some people sport. who say that isn't a sport, though. <laughs> yeah, but it is, because it's, you know, it, it, there's an art to it. <laughs> there is definitely an art really? obviously well it no, must be because the non-darts players well listen you know talking about bully we've got yeah. simon here all oh, right yes simon hello hello love hi good simon evening. good now, evening now have you got a bully story 
No, it's not about oh. Bully. It was about three, two, one, and Dusty Ben. Oh, oh right. right. Oh, well. oh, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. With Ted Rogers. Yeah, Ted Rogers. Uh, my story was um, I was on a newspaper in the town where you were born and brought up, Northampton. Oh, whereabouts in Northampton? Uh, well, I was on the Post, which was um, Post newspaper. That it became the Herald and Post. Yes. But uh, it was opposite the... Our front door was opposite the stage door of the Derngate Theatre. Oh, well, you're just up from the uh, Boot and Shoe Museum. That's it. Oh, and, yeah, uh, I know it anyway, well. we used to go over there, um, the editorial guys, we used to drink in the mail coach pub, but also we used to go to the, to the bar of the theatre mm. on a lunchtime and have a drink. And one Simon, day... can I just stop you there? Yeah. In that very bar, that's where I saw the Grey Lady Ghost. No. Yes, on a school trip. I think I used to be married to her. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Simon. Sorry, carry on. I, I, just, I get so excited when I meet someone from Northampton. Yes, of course, it's you like know everything. Had, um, it's like when we had Matt Smith, well, you know, Dr. Other... Rue. Yeah. He's a yeah, Northampton I, lad. I watched that the other night. I enjoyed that. But uh, I used to, uh, as an aside, I used to deal with your dad when he was at the Cobblers. Oh, I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> He was all right, he was. Oh, oh, no, he's my dad. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> anyway, my story, uh, for what it's worth, is uh, one day myself and a colleague who is called Mark, who is now the managing director of a national newspaper, mm -hmm. and I can't tell you who he is or which paper, um, but uh, me and him went over to the theatre for a drink, and it was during the pantomime run where Ted Rogers was in the pantomime at Derngate with Dusty Bin. And Dusty Bin was a, um, it was about, uh, I don't know, just above my knee height, maybe a bit more. And it was a remote-controlled bin on wheels. Oh, don't spoil it, Simon. Yeah, I thought it was real. <laughs> no, oh, no, you've no. ruined it, it now. It, it, it was real on the television, but this was the Oh, one, right, you know, right, OK. Um, yeah, like when we dress up as Father Christmas, that thing. But anyway, this um, particular day we went over there and we were talking to one of the barmen and we were saying about... Where was Dusty Ben? Where did they keep it? And he said, oh, come on, I'll show you. So he takes us upstairs into this sort of room, and there is Dusty Ben. So there's myself and my colleague Mark, who was worked with me in editorial, and there was also um, uh, one of the photographers was in the bar, and he came up and he got his camera gear with him. He'd just been on a job. So we thought it would be fun to uh, get a picture with Dusty Ben mucking about. Oh, right. So myself and Mark sort of position ourselves... Uh, each side of it, and um, anyway, the long, the long, the short story long is that um, <laughs> we did this picture. And we were messing about this thing and moving it about, and moving the arms about, and sort of sitting on it and leaning on it, and that was that. And then we heard on the radio later that day, or sorry, the next day, we heard on the radio that um, it said something like hundreds of children were disappointed last night when Dusty Bin didn't turn up because it was broken. Oh no! Oh, no! And that was you. Well, I can't be sure it was us, but of course we'd been fiddling about with it, who uh, were, and it um, <laughs> it didn't turn up because it wouldn't work, it wouldn't move. Oh, oh you'd no. broken and his arms and one. stuff. So that night it was uh, you know Ted Rogers without Dusty Bin, and uh, the next day we were but we didn't say anything. So to this did day, did you no, feel no, bad? Sorry? We, did you feel bad or you were kind of laughing about it? Uh, we laughed. <laughs> you laughed? Oh. oh, you're cruel. Well, just hard-hearted journalists. No, I mean, at, at the time, you know, afterwards you sort of think, oh, that's terrible, but when you get older, but oh, at that I'm... time, you know, when I was younger, you sort of just think, but I've still got the photograph. I found that photograph the other day. I've got a black-and-white picture of myself and my colleague uh, with... With Dusty Ben. <laughs> and that. Oh, no. Simon, you know what you should have done? You should have gone to Ted Rogers and then told him in a riddle why what you'd done to Dusty Ben and see if he guessed it. Yeah, and I think he'd have done the finger gesture, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, and I bet I know which finger gesture he would have done. Exactly. <laughs> oh, Simon, that's a wonderful story. I won't pass your details on to the authorities. No, please don't. That's why I refuse to give your people my surname. Oh, no, oh, yes. Oh, crikey. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you what it is, it's Templar. 
Simon Templar. Oh, oh right. right, thank yeah. you. Yes, lovely. otherwise known as the Saint. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have a lovely weekend, Bye, Simon. Simon. Thanks, Bye. Thank Bye. you. Oh, oh dear. So, oh, if you were a child at Derngate. And yes. you went to see that performance of Dusty Bin. Yeah. Simon Templar ruined it. It's terrible. Do you remember Dusty Bin? I never I... really could understand those. You know, it's a, oh, three letters, bin. That's an anagram of nib. Yeah, like oh, it was pen. it was cryptic. It was so cryptic. But we were very young, though, weren't we, when that was yeah, out? It yeah. was way too cryptic Because it made you think it was the bin. But then it wouldn't be yeah, the bin. It'd yeah. be like an amazing ology to Mauritius. <laughs> yeah, it's all gone. They were cunning. Yeah, it okay. ran. I don't know how long it ran for, but it was massive, wasn't it? And do you remember the dancers, the Brian Rogers connection? No. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> That's the sound Bev makes when I'm bringing out her dinner. No. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the calls coming. <laughs> oh five hundred two eighty eight. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> oh, no. I'm scared. Play some music. <laughs> I'm laughing so much reading these emails, you know, they're hilarious. I know, I know. <laughs> um, I once worked with Jimmy Nan, who wrote the catchphrases for catchphrase. What's that then? Say what you see, say what you see. <laughs> That's not what that, it is. Yeah, no. that was one of them. It's it's good, but it's not right. <laughs> Was he that? He wasn't that Irish, was he? He wasn't really. But he's, yeah, I don't know. I'm not. You know, what was he called? Can't remember. Please don't mention his name. <laughs> Roy Walker. Roy Walker, that's, that's right. It, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Sorry, I've, I've lost it. <laughs> no, but Jimmy Nairn, he warmed up for the Rocking Berries in a sadly now demolished theatre. We plagued him with suggestions for new catchphrases, most of which wouldn't have made the watershed, I bet. <laughs> Great show, making me laugh, Katie in Brighton. So, uh, yeah. Oh, no, no, you know the dancer? The dancer from um, Tales of the Unexpected? Yeah. Got a few uh, texts about that. The lady who danced naked on Tales of the Unexpected was actually five months pregnant at the time. That's Sophie on the M11. I don't know how she knows that. Uh, yeah. She certainly didn't look pregnant. She was just body beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, the dance... Well, maybe that's the unexpected bit. <laughs> From the back, you go, oh, and then she turns around, she's like, oh, me back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm carrying twins. You go, that's unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone, Richard said... Um, Richard said he, he, the woman from uh, Tales Unexpected was on TFI Friday once. She was very pretty and refined looking. Oh. So what does that suppose? Well, it's because she was naked. People just assume she's, she's not a nice person. Kind of a slapper yeah. or yes, something. Yes. I mean, she was only paid to do it. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't see anything. No. She was only a silhouette. And every Bond film has that, doesn't it? You're right. Yes. And sometimes the Bond films you see a bit more. Yeah, mm. <laughs> if you look hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> there I am in my trench coat down the Odeon. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to get your kids. Oh, there. I know, I know. Oh, we only live twice. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, no. <laughs> that was bad. That was brilliant, Alan. <laughs> Sorry, I really appreciate that. Oh, dear. Now, the dancer, it says here, at the beginning was a 27 year old secretary called Karen Stanley from Berkshire. She made the whole thing up and had never danced before in her life. This is a lady tells me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her boyfriend worked on Top of the Pops and re recommended her to Anglia Television, and she knew my ex's uncle. But what's the audition piece, though, for it? I mean, you know, oh, just take your clothes off and go behind the screen. And do a Sounds little... Sounds like Dr Fat John's <laughs> kind of uh, <laughs> surgery. No, you know, and I'll, I'll yeah. shine this torch behind the screen. I mean, she must have thought, wait a minute, what's well, going on well, here? I mean, that's what it says here. And it's now, uh, she says she now works in A&E, an A&E department <laughs> Hospital. And that's from Richard Lee Leach in Manchester. He knows an awful lot about her. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> Stalker. No, no, I'm sure he's not. No. Very interesting. Thanks for sharing Well, she's that. iconic, isn't it? Thank you for all that information. Lovely. We've got a caller. Hello, Anne. Hello, Alan. Hello, Mel. Hello, darling. How are you? I'm absolutely wonderful. I, I can't stop laughing. Oh, oh, I love good. your show. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I, I can't eat, though. I can't eat my tea while I'm listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> She is in the chips, you know. <laughs> oh, I like that. She is in the chips. <laughs> I might, sounds like the name of a biography. I might write that. She is in the chips by Alan Carr. <laughs> so, 
I'll have, you... to have, I'll have to have some of the uh, royalties off you there, Alan. Oh, well, yeah, we'll split it 50 50, uh, Anne. That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> you can have the tears, I'll have the chips. <laughs> Now, is it true you've had a ninja moment? Oh, yes. Oh. I, I've had many over my life, but the, the one that sticks out was about um, about 15 years ago when I was about 50, and I've got limited mobility. And my husband worked in an indoor market, and he got to go to the wholesaler, so he asked me to go in half an hour before the market closed so that I could um, tidy up and um, do the skivvy in and close up for him, which I did. Mm -hmm. And I'd got a big bag of rubbish, closed the stall up, and I was just waiting for my friend next door. And I was standing outside the stall, but by some stairs. And I was aware of a man um, coming up the stairs. Now, the market was closing, so no one else was allowed in. And he's creeping up the stairs, pushed past me and grabbed an armful of clothes off the um, man that had the stall opposite he turned round to run down the stairs with all these clothes, and I was absolutely incensed with him. Yeah. Uh, because I couldn't run, I did the only thing I could, which was swung the black bag with all the rubbish <laughs> as hard as I could <laughs> as he got to the top of the stairs. <laughs> and it was like something from, um, uh, from a comedy film. It was, it was hitting every stair, uh, <laughs> try, trying to stand up and failing dismally. The clothes went everywhere. But the good thing is he got to the bottom of the stairs and he hadn't got any clothes left, so I managed to save all of them. Oh, well the market done! Trader. <laughs> Oh, Anne, you're like a have-a-go hero <laughs> on wheels. So I, I, I was known as Super Nan after that for, for quite a long time. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, wow, that's a great story and doing your bit as well. I always do, I'm afraid. Uh, no, don't be afraid, it's fantastic. We've got to have people like you in this world. Oh, uh, well, I, I admire, especially older people, no, I'm older, I admire any of them that's have-a-go because I'm exactly the same. Yeah, did you see that? There was an older lady in the news this year where mm. she walloped that guy with her handbag oh, in that was it a jewellery nice. shop that he... Do you remember that? Yeah, I think it was it? in yeah. Northampton. Oh, it, was it was actually it? in Northampton. She, she was my heroine. She's... Um, I'm mine. When I saw it, I was like, you go, girl. <laughs> sort them out. My, any of my family would tell you, if there's, if there's a, a bit of uh, trouble, I'm usually in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should get together with that other woman and start a new Charlie's Angels. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Oh, almost Charlie's Angel. <laughs> yeah, we need another one. Maybe Mel. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm in. I'm in. Oh, have a lovely weekend, yes, Anne. I'm, I'm gonna... just going to go and collect the old man from the pub. So... OK, we well, don't hit anyone on the way there, all right? <laughs> I love you both to bitch. The show is fantastic. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me on. I've really enjoyed oh, it. Oh, it's a pleasure, Anne. Thanks so much. Thank have you. a lovely evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, we like Anne. Yeah, she's cool, man. She's 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 very cool. She's girl power. We, I've got some girl power emails here in text. When my mum and dad were courting, a horse chased them <laughs> and bit my mum's elbow <laughs> and my dad jumped over the fence. <gasps> so he just scarpered and left poor mum. And that was on a date? Yes. And so they still got still got together, even yeah, they, though he yeah, did the she... eye jump? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hi, guys. I ended up in a fight with a guy who started a fight with my husband. I'm five foot. My husband was six foot three. He stood by while I made short work of the assailant. <laughs> <laughs> he became my ex-husband. Hmm, wonder why. <laughs> Love the show, Annie in Glasgow. Oh, dear, this is brilliant. Keep the calls coming. 0500 288 91. Remember, you can text 88 to 91, and you can email us at alan.car at bbc.com. Co.uk. Let us know all oh, your shrinking. If you've got a husband who's a shrinking violet, <laughs> let us know. Or if you've worked on an old show or know someone who's worked on an old show, let us know. And also let us know what you're doing. And if you've got a shout out, if someone's getting married or having a birthday, let us know. 0500 288 to 91. Low Rider by War. Is that right? I like it, but I didn't, yeah, I've never yeah. heard of the band War. No, I haven't. I like it. <laughs> Good. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I know the guy who sang the theme tune to the Moomins. I play golf with him. His name's Mark Porter in Wales. Shane. Do you remember the thing you the I don't Moomins? remember it. Was it good? It was like really country and western. We are the moment. Oh, <laughs> oh no, that's 
a small West Country. And yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, well, that's the still a claim oh, to fame. No, it is. The, it's a nice song. This is Lisa from Buxton, Derbyshire. My 80s claim to fame was I stroked Orville <laughs> and was quite disappointed to find out how matted he was. <laughs> yes, uh, well, I've stroked him too. Is he matted? And he's quite rough. He's got rough fur. <laughs> well, he's supposed to be feathers, but he's actually <laughs> oh, fur. Dear. It's very confusing. <laughs> must, he's been going for ages, but it's like a scowl right now when you touch him. <laughs> <laughs> Green wire wool. <laughs> Did you touch cuddles? No, he wasn't there. Oh, he's a bit <laughs> like that. <laughs> Such a diva. He didn't turn up. <laughs> it's a live show as well. <laughs> um, I've got Hartley hair from Tipkins in my loft. <gasps> what? Luke has. Oh, my gosh. He was scary looking, Hartley hair. I can't remember Hartley hair. He was very sinister. He was really quite Are you sinister. Sure? Yeah, Hartley hair. Yeah, Let's I never liked him as a kid. On... I was quite scared of him. Let's have a look at him on. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, he's really. Look at oh, that. Oh, he's got teeth <laughs> like me. <laughs> I know it looks like me. <laughs> oh, God. It looks. Like... No, don't You're take the this the wrong version. way. Yes. But, but it... between me and Silla Black. <laughs> Surprise, surprise. <laughs> there isn't a good way to take that <laughs> from Silla. <laughs> I know he was. Ri I mean, he li that's a newish that's puppet. That's not nice for a child. I, honestly. It looks like a bad taxidermy. You know when you go, like, some round to, like... Yeah, honestly. <gasps> oh, I no. when I, I'm, Oh, but the pig, there was a pig in it, wasn't there? Yes. And he wasn't very attractive as well. I think it was done on a budget, really. I mean, that could be another phone-in, isn't it? Yeah. Like, things... Um, Shows, 80 shows which you've been traumatised <laughs> yeah. by, which you meant to like, you know yeah, what I mean? definitely. He was very scary. Oh, look at it talking. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's horrible. Oh, dear. Um, um, go on. Oh, no, no, it's just, um, uh, who is this? Richard's got in touch. I played in the music for Mad Lizzie and her early morning workouts on TVM. <laughs> do you remember Mad yes, Lizzie? Yes, I do. I played the wrong music one day. She was really mad. <laughs> In fact, she was livid. <laughs> oh, dear, livid Lizzie. <laughs> Having a great time with the lovely Carol on our uh, boat, drinking red wine and enjoying the show, Richard. By the way, I also played the icky boink noise for Mallet's Mallet, usually five seconds too late. <laughs> Do you remember that? Doing a whack yes. wave yes. Yeah, mallet, mallet. Oh, dear. Uh, hi, loves. I was lucky enough to be one of the kids that stood behind Chris Tarrant for three hours <laughs> on this <laughs> one. <laughs> Great. Lucky you. <laughs> I think my parents had bumped into him in Lorenzo's restaurant in Brum one night. Anyway, I got to meet Jasper Carrot, Lenny Henry, and best of all, got to do the Kisses for Me dance with the Brotherhood of Man. Love to oh. you both, Mike Colley. That's very That's eventful, quite cool, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> um, we've got a caller. Hello, Helen. Hello, lovely. Hello. Hello. Have you got um, a story I... about... Oh, 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 go on. Oh, no, sorry. I was a bit previous then, wasn't no, I? Go oh, it, no, go for it, Helen. You are yeah, a feisty have, woman. Got, you're, um, you're like Wendy involved... Deng. <laughs> you're like Wendy Deng, the way you just suddenly went, <laughs> oh, straight in there. Sorry. No, go on, go on. I'm as bad as you on your Chatty Man show. <laughs> oh! Alan, I think you'll... I don't know, you might find this funny. Um, it involves my husband and my hamster, who's now departed. <laughs> oh, dear, oh dear. right. Um, the hamster escaped from the cage, and we heard um, some scratching up in the loft, which we don't use. Right. And then Paul said, Helen, um, Snowy's in the loft. I think I can hear. So he looked at me, um, and I looked at him, and I said, so... You know, anyway, it was me. He didn't want to go up into the loft. So I, went, <laughs> I was start naked with a dressing gown on. So um, oh. I got up into the loft looking for Snowy. And um, I saw Snowy. And um, I made a, a run for her. But I forgot that you're not supposed to... Um, you're supposed to walk on the joists, aren't you? Yes. And I forgot. And I went straight through <laughs> into my bedroom. But I stopped halfway through. So I was naked from, like, the boobs down, and my dressing gown was around my neck, above, <laughs> everything just hanging out. <laughs> and oh. the kids were below, sort of saying... Where's Snowy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they went, no, that's not Snowy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear! <laughs> Oh, oh well, um, it was, well, so he's departed now, bless oh, his soul. I'm but, not um, surprised after that. I, mean, I could have died. Oh, sorry, Helen. Stop oh, laughing. I'm sorry. I had bruises all around my boobs. I had, I had like a neck thing that I had to wear because it was a. So I couldn't move my head. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sorry. Now, you 
That's how rude. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, dear me. It's a story that I'll take with me. <laughs> oh, Ellen, it is funny, it though. Is, I know yeah. you were hurt, but it is funny. But it's only because he was too... I have to get the spiders as well. I have to do all that. It's not fair, is it? No, and if we hear a noise, you know, it's usually the hamsters, because we've got another one called Roger now. Um, it's usually Paul that say, Ellen, what down? You go, you go. Oh. So, yeah. Dear. <laughs> well, Helen, that is absolutely fantastic, that story. I'm going to pop a rosette in the post for oh, you. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Thanks, and, uh, Helen. Yeah, and, get, uh, and give Roger a pat from us, OK? I will. Take care. Bye, Bye love. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Do you know, my ex used to be like that, though. If there was a noise downstairs, he'd sort of look at me and I'd be like... And I would be down the stairs quick like that because I just think, best to head on, you know, get yeah. down there and sort it. And it's usually nothing, but, yeah, I was always out of there downstairs yeah, yeah, before yeah. him. I remember when my dad was away, you know, he was a football manager, sometimes yeah. he'd be away and uh, just be me and my mum and my brother in the house. And I remember hearing a... Um, a noise downstairs, yeah. and then I went into like my mum and dad's room. My mum's just there, and like I, I tapped her on the shoulder and went, Mum, there's someone downstairs. She went, Oh, woke up, oh, punched me right in the face. <laughs> I had a bruised eye. You went, Ah, did you want I was a burglar? I, I would have been safer downstairs <laughs> with the assailant. <laughs> Oh, she did get a shot. Now, mind you, I can oh. understand my mum, because if you are asleep oh, and you've gosh, got someone yeah. looking over you... Oh, but, yes. I mean, actually, I went there for protection. <laughs> you <laughs> ended up getting guy. assaulted. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, yeah, call us now on 0500 281 Text us 88 to 91 and email us at alan.car at bbc.co.uk. But in the meantime, let's have a bit of Julio Iglesias. Oh, a bit of Julio Iglesias there. Um, you know, we asked uh, people to tell us, let's know what they're doing tonight. Yeah. Liz Wilton has said, I'm doing the ironing, waiting for a new fridge to be delivered between three and seven. Well, we did ask. <laughs> well, I hope it turns up, Liz. Um, after the news, we've got all your ninja lady stories. We've got your old telly appearances. We've got the telly quiz and all your party tunes. This is BBC Radio 2, online, on digital and on 88 to 91 FM. <laughs> Gonna make you sweat. Open brackets, everybody dance now. Close brackets, CNC <laughs> Music Factory. Here. Gone. Liz has got in touch. The fridge has arrived. It's great. Oh, at ten past seven. Mm. Bit late. They always do that, don't they? It's yes. like three till seven. You know it's 6.59 it's when terrible. they're going to turn up. It's terrible. The way. Hi, Ellen Mel. Please say hi to Mike and Sally. We're on the Thames boating holiday. Tell Mike to relax. He's driving me crazy. Great show. You always make us laugh. And that's from Sally. Uh, brilliant programme. Steve and Dawn in our caravan. Steve and Dawn, not Steve and Dawn. Steve and Dawn in our caravan in the beautiful county of Cornwall. Hi, Ellen Mel. Sat in sunshine listening to your show, drinking champers and waiting for daughter to finish burning the barbecue to celebrate <laughs> my 47th birthday. And that's from Helen. Hello, you two. We're on the M6 on our way to France on our first family holiday with our baby girl, Annabelle. Please tell my husband that even though he's a plonker at times, <laughs> I still love him very much. Thanks oh. for making us laugh. That's Susanna Cooper. Hi, Alan and Mel. Say a big hello to Jeremy, who's listening through headphones whilst cutting the hedge in Rockcliffe, Cumbria. Got to keep him busy. I'm making meringue in kitchen for a raspberry roulade uh, for later. Please tell him he's my world and I love him loads. And well, there's no name... And oh. it's Jeremy in Cumbria. Oh, OK. Um, you know, we're asking for stories about your claim to fame, like 70, uh, 70s, 80s programmes. Yes. Um, Astrid in Glasgow. I sang Jingle Bells with Rod Hull and Emu on Radio Merseyside in Christmas 1975. Oh, wow. My husband says Emu didn't sing, so it was really only singing with Rod. But that's just a technicality. <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. Oh, dear. Hi, Eleanor. Well, my stepmom was a floor manager at the BBC for years and used to work on shows as diverse as Blue Peter, Swap Shop and Top of the Pops. She never got starstruck except for the time she met Paul McCartney, which is understandable. Yeah. She lost all professional inhibitions to get his autograph. She still has it in a scrapbook next to other prized autographs from Vincent Price and Tony Hart. And that's from Rod, currently driving south on the M74. 400 miles to go. <laughs> did, did you ever do that with Tony Hart? Did you ever send any um, I did, photos, I um, sent, any drawings in? Yeah, 
Yeah, I sent a, I joined into that, never never made the board. No. I sent a letter to Jim will fix it because I wanted to meet the Charlie's Angels. And yeah. It never happened. Because you know I wanted to meet Wonder Woman. We've talked about oh, this. Oh, yes, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That didn't happen. And I also sent in for, um, there was a competition on Blue Peter to design Princess Diana's wedding dress. And yeah. the person that got it closest to one that she actually wore yeah. won, and mine was completely. What Completely. kind of dress did you think she'd well, wear? Well, I thought she'd wear the really high neck thing. That, you know, she was. She always saw her in those frilly blouses that yeah. went around the neck. I, and I, she had a lovely long neck as yeah, well, didn't she? Yeah, and I thought she was going to wear that, and she ended up wearing a plunging V-neck. I couldn't believe oh, it. Oh, no. So, yeah, I've had no luck. And she, but I ended up working in television, so I suppose that's all right. Yeah. You know what I and mean? And also, you, um, <laughs> you know, you graced the pages of a case catalogue. How many people can say that? Not many. No, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also the face of, is it Hartley Hare? <laughs> <laughs> so we're all winners in different ways. <laughs> Um, <laughs> give us a ring if you fancy. 0500 288 to 91. Calls are free from the BT landline. Other networks may vary and calls from mobiles may cost more. Text us on 88 to 91. Texts will be charged at your standard network rate. And you can email us at alan.car at bbc.co.uk. As you all know, this is Party Tune Request Hour. And Esther has been in touch. Can you please play Man Eater for my sister Bear? We are in the car with my husband Nick and baby girl Cherry May in a 500 mile trip from Perth, Scotland to Portsmouth. Oh, We've been Christ. waiting for you to come on the radio, Alan, to make our time fly. Oh, well, um, I hope you like it. Man eater, haul and oats and drive safely. Uh, just finishing the ironing, then off out to a chilly and quiz night. What joy. Great tunes, as always. Love Louise in Hereford. Loads of people iron on a Saturday. I like to do ironing on a Tuesday. <laughs> do you? I do, I do. Do you, watch it, do you do it while you're watching the telly? Well, you have to. You'd go round the bend if yeah, you're just I, sitting there doing yeah, it. it's horrible. I hate ironing. It's boring, isn't it? It's just the worst housework job. And emptying the dishwasher, that is boring. Yeah, that's a bit rubbish. Because that door's so is... heavy, isn't it? <laughs> Don't you think the door's heavy when you're I always do it too soon and end up having a facial at the oh. same time. <laughs> oh, I hate that, yeah. It burns, yeah. doesn't it? And your glasses steam on. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, we talk about ninja women. <laughs> A la day. And uh, we were in Vancouver. An enormous mother elk stampeded towards us as we were cooing to her baby. Running scared, our dad pushed all three of his young daughters and wife out of the way, slipping on ice in a comedy style, and he got in the car and shut and locked all the doors, leaving us to run <gasps> no, into the woods. We, that is bad. <laughs> we still laugh about it all the time when we're together. Love the show. That's Georgina in Brighton. Uh, dear Alan and Mel, the story of the lady whose husband used her to protect herself from the dog reminded me when my other half and I went fishing off Pink Bay Rocks in Porth Cole many years ago. A large wave swept me off my feet and almost into the sea and all my partner Steve shouted to me was, don't let go of the rod! <laughs> we're, st <laughs> <laughs> we're still together after 30 years. <laughs> Love the show. And that's uh, Christine. Um, hi, Alan and Mel. I was on holiday with my boyfriend on the Greek island Thassos. We were swimming in a beautiful cove when I looked down and saw something in the water. I wasn't worried as the water was deep and the creature didn't look anything dangerous. I pointed this out to my boyfriend as a point of interest. Oh, look, I said, I think it might be a squid. He was slightly behind me at the time, and when I turned round to see him, he, he was halfway back to the beach at some speed. <laughs> he shouted over his shoulder, It might be dangerous, you distract it. <laughs> show Lindsay. Oh, terrible, dear. honestly. Well, the, the, the telequiz lines are now... Cl I sound like Brucey then. The... the, 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 the. <laughs> Dittery, I am not. <laughs> the telly quiz lines are now you closed. It's really uncanny. What's wrong the, with the, you? The, <laughs> since you do well, Mel. <laughs> oh, that's, that could be a new phrase. Yeah. When you read when... like a Welsh <laughs> name. <laughs> Did you do well, Mel? Uh, the it's tele never going to happen. <laughs> I, know, I know, that catchphrase won't get popular. <laughs> um, the telly quiz lines are now closed. OK, I have right. to speak slowly yes. now. Yes, OK. Coming up after the next song, we've got the telly quiz. And it's man versus wife. Fantastic. So this will be good. But in the meantime... Um, 
Oh, is it? Sarah has been in touch. She says, can you please play Shame, Shame, Shame by Shirley and Company, because I love you and Mel and your show and listen every week. Got back from a fantastic week's holiday in Weymouth, where I was born. <laughs> yes, see, and this song would end the holiday off great. Well, here we go. A bit of Shame, Shame and more Shame. <laughs> Didn't you do well, Mel? <laughs> Email. <laughs> I'm a bit oh, hungry. Stop that. <laughs> stop it. Now, the reason we have that music is because uh, for our telequares, we've got David Walker. Hello, David. Hello. Hello, Ellen and Mel. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, brilliant. You've got a bit of help tonight, haven't you? I have. Who have you got? Well, not for my little grey tomcat, but um, <laughs> oh, I've got a bit of help. Who from? I thought your cat was helping. Oh, well, he, he, well he, he's asleep. Oh, he's gone to sleep. He's asleep. Oh. He's, um, he's... Our show has that effect on people. <laughs> well, it doesn't, it doesn't really. He's had a butterfly today and he's, he's just had his tea and he's asleep. Oh, but he so... loves the show. Oh, does he? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and what's he loves his... the show and he'll send you a signed photo. Oh, oh, thanks. What's his name so we can look out for him? Malcolm. Malcolm. Malcolm the cat. I love it. <laughs> He's Malcolm. He's a great Tom. Yeah. Aww. From Glastonbury. And he, he's looking forward to the show. Well, he, he does every week. Oh, well, if he's asleep now, he'll have to watch it back on iPlayer or something. Oh, he, well, he's very good. He likes the mouse on the internet. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. Malcolm is a clever cat. <laughs> he's a clever cat. And also, there's a bit of a twist because the other person on the telly quiz, who's that? It's my wife, Corinne. Right. Oh, now does she yeah. have a cat to help her? Yeah, well, Malcolm watches television, but we don't. <laughs> I remember Crossroads. <laughs> you remember Crossroads? Oh, we're going back some, aren't we? Oh, oh well, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that's going to help you very much, darling. <laughs> it's not help me, is it? No. Now, are you ready to go for this? Yeah, yeah. You've got a minute and a half to answer ten questions. Here we go. Right, Question number one. Right. When I was just a little girl, I asked my mother, what would I be? The movie Pillow Talk. Will I is be proof? Oh. You have to stop. <laughs> the movie okay. Pillow Talk is on this week. It stars Rock Hudson and which singing star? Oh, um... Move over, darling. Oh, well, that's, well, well, was that Malcolm? That's, <laughs> that's Malcolm. Oh, that you've woke up Malcolm. Did I wake Malcolm. up Malcolm with me singing? <laughs> Guys, we're only on question one. Come oh, oh, on. Uh, what other songs? Oh, I, um, I had hey, a secret Sarah. love. All right. Hayley Mills, no. Hayley Mills. Doris, Doris Day. Doris Day. Number Doris two. Day. Number two. Okay. Wonder Stuff is a new series that looks at hygiene products. When Alan takes his weekly bath, which fragrance of scented bath oil does he use? Um, Radox. No, Febreze. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> I wear pet. Geordie School for Girls is a new reality series set in which British city? Newcastle. Well, congratulations. Number four. You like it the hot and the spicy? There's a documentary on this week about a crime organisation, the Kamara. In which country would you find the Kamara? Is that how you say it? Kamara. Kamara. Did you do well? <laughs> Mel. Mel. Um, <laughs> you like Italy. it the hot and spicy? Is it Italy? Yes, yes. it's Italy. Well done. Oh, number five. Number Let's go for number five. Alicia and Andy's return leaves Layla feeling frustrated. Name the soap. Ooh, is it Emmerdale? It is! Oh, I got another one. Well, well done, you got three. One, two, oh, thank you. three. Yeah, yeah three. three. I haven't watched... Malcolm watches all the telly. I haven't watched telly for three... Oh, 20 years. So, so you, did, you did well. So what really inspired you to, to <laughs> ring up and join the telly quiz when you don't even watch telly? Oh, Alan, stop it. OK, all right. Now, oh, listen... <laughs> well, we've got the missus on next, haven't we? Yeah, I'll pass you on to my wife. Yes, we've got to play a tune first and then we're going to talk to her. What's her oh, name? Corin. Corin, that's right. Yeah. OK, yeah. we'll speak to Corin in a bit and see if she can be your free. Well, three's good. It's In not your bad. Head it it's is. not great. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the best. It's though. below average, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think Malcolm could have done better. <laughs> Telly Queen! A 
That's right, it's our Delegues. And our second caller is Corinne. Hello, Alan. Hello, Mel. Hello, how are you? Oh, great. I'm just prodding Malcolm awake now. As a... oh. <laughs> and he's biting me. Is he? Oh, he is. He's a, he's a very unsociable cat. That's why we put him in front of the telly to calm him down. Oh, <laughs> no. Well, you've got to beat three, so you don't really need the cat's help, do you, really? Oh, all right. It, it can't be that difficult. But, but you know oh. your you know your husband? He said the last thing he watched was uh, Crossroads. Well, you uh, see, uh, pretty pretty much similar here, actually. But, you know, I'm psychic, and Malcolm and I have got this sort of thing. And so, well, who knows? I, I could beat him, and if I don't, I'll beat him anyway. So, there you go. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. So we've got another Wendy Day on the phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you ready to play, Karim? Let's go. All right, you've got a minute and a half to answer ten questions. Question number one. A little less conversation, a little conversation for you. There's a documentary on this week about which favourite Las Vegas performer? Um, oh, oh, God, I don't know. Oh, you do? Oh, Dean Martin. No, this... a hunk, a hunk of moon and love. Oh, Elvis. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. a programme about internet dating scams on this week, but if Alan went internet dating, which three words do you think he'd use to describe his personality? <laughs> Uh, lovable, gorgeous, and handsome. No, Hartley the hair. <laughs> Hartley the hair. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, you can see the movie Gorillas in the Mist on this week. For a point, can you do an impression of a gorilla doing a weather forecast? Oh, right, Steve. Oh, oh, I'm sorry about that. I'm lost in the mist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can have that, yeah, yeah, you can have that. Number four, Man, Woman, Wild is a series in which a survival expert and his wife attempt to survive in the wild. For a point, can you tell us which piece of equipment me and Alan would take with us if we went camping in the wild? Um, probably a thermos flask. No, it's an inflatable <laughs> highwayman. Ooh, can I have one? Oh, I'll They're be sleeping great. outside the tent that night. <laughs> we can share. <laughs> Yes, oh no, indeed. <laughs> Number five. <I'm> down. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, keep going. Eddie, keep going. Keep no one might going. notice. <laughs> Eddie turns on Jean for snooping through his letters. Name the soap. Coronation Street. Oh. oh, gosh, you had to get that one to equalise. I'm afraid you've only got to. Oh, David God. won. Oh, no. Oh. oh, no. He's never going to let you lift that down, is he? Never. For those of you who wanted to know, it was actually EastEnders. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Oh, I, I didn't do my job very no, well, did no. I? <laughs> oh, never mind. I'll let you I, off. I got two. You yeah, did. Well, you know what? Done. What's he saying? <laughs> What's David stop? Hello? Can I speak? Yes, can you can a, speak. A photo, Alan? Of course you and can. Now? Yes, of course you can. Now, does oh, Malcolm want one as well? Send you a sign on to Malcolm. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> We've had worse sent through the post, <laughs> to be honest. He's gorgeous. He's pink. Uh, pink cat? Yeah. Is he one of those ones with no fur? No. Oh, he's got loads of fur, but he's pink. And he loves your show. Oh, yeah. oh, OK, that, well, that's, that's wonderful. Nice. That's <laughs> really lovely. And I'll pop a rosette in the post for you as well, so you can share it, OK? Oh, oh we love you. your show. We love your show. Thanks, guys. We love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, my bye. love. Oh, what a lovely couple. Oh, and Malcolm. And Malcolm. Don't forget Malcolm. Oh, well, how could I forget? <laughs> A big pink cat. Furry pink cat. Yeah, I don't know. Ooh, are you know. sure it is actually a cat and they're not talking to a <laughs> slipper? Can <laughs> <laughs> okay, you imagine? Yeah, We've been talking are... to lunatics for the past five minutes. You're going, no wonder it's a slave, it's a slipper. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't moved for ages. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Pete Green from Gloucestershire has been in touch because it's one of... Oh, Dance the Night Away, the Mavericks. That's his dedication. He says, because it's one of those songs that always gets them up dancing at karaoke. Yes, Karaoke, yeah. So let's play it. The Mavericks, Dance the Night Away. This is for you, Pete. I hope you like it. Alan, can you please read out my text? This is from Linda in Belper. As I've, as I've texted Radio 2 lots of times, no one ever reads mine out. Oh. I think it's because I'm not interesting. Please help. Never met anyone from old TV shows. Saw Alma from Coronation Street in a pharmacy once. <laughs> Well, Linda, that's the reason why you don't get your text written out. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
I'm not but no, I, I uh, yeah, I'm good for you. Leading <laughs> thing Alma. Do you know the first person famous person I ever saw oh. was Elsie Tanner. Really? What was she called? Pat Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was it was in Hitchens, which was like a, a catalogue second shop, and she was rifling through this basket, and I was only little, and I was saying to my mum, there's Elsie Tanner. Is that when you realised you wanted to be in catalogues? <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's the reason my career yeah. happened. <laughs> well, I saw Sue Nichols. Do you remember? Yes. Her? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she was sniffing some um, flowers in <laughs> in a supermarket. And uh, I remember from Mrs. Popoff. Remember of Rent and Coast? And I was like, ah, oh, you know, she goes, ah, ah, do like end up on a, an industrial estate somewhere. I forgot she did that. Yeah. I totally forgot she did that. That's oh, funny. I love Rent a Ghost. It what? was brilliant, wasn't yeah. it? Um, uh, hi, Alan. You know, we're talking about 70s TV shows. Hi, Alan. We're just on our way back from St. Ives to Birmingham when we, where we spent a lovely week with the speedboat. We won on Bullseye in 1983. Oh. It only gets out once a year now, and that's from there. John and little George. So they actually used it. Because I do want worry, you know, because you know their heart must have sunk when they saw um, a speedboat <laughs> sunk, coming out. No, no, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean. Yeah. You know what I mean. I know what you mean. Because you would have rather have the holiday. Because you only live near a river or a sea. Yeah, it's that's obviously worked money. out well for them. Yeah, I'm glad it's paid back dividends. <laughs> Please, we've got loads of shout outs. Yes, so just whiz through some because it's not fair. People Let's have sent them in. I haven't had time to say. Go on. Please say hi to my wonderful daughter who is off to the World Scout Jamboree tomorrow for 18 days. Oh. I'll miss her a lot, Sue, in rugby. I've just left a friend's wedding reception, a car full of guitars, and I'm off to play a gig in a field in a suit and tie. Stay classy, Dan <laughs> in Devon. Oh, classy, I don't know. Think... Hi, Alan and Melanie. My fab Saturday is sitting at our pool in Florida. Oh, I'm dead, uh... Jell. It is 1pm and I'm loving hearing your voices this far away. Can you please say happy birthday to my daughter, Isabella, who was five on Thursday. Thanks. Love, Gillian. There's one of those backhanded compliments. Yeah. Listening to our voices from far away. away. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Alan and Mel. Me and my girlfriend Joe are in South End on Sea. We've been metal detecting all afternoon on the beach. The show is great. Love Zoe. Hi, Alan and Mel. We are currently listening to your show whilst camping near Coldingham Bay, enjoying a bottle of wine and basking in the sunshine. Love the show and thank you for all the laughter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mention it. <laughs> From on, Paula Day. On our way to my brother Clive's 60th birthday party in Stowe on the Wold, wishing him a great evening. Love Mark and Carol. Great show, guys. Hi, Alan and Mel. It's Louise and Bump from Hartlepool. Please, could you play Hey, Mickey, you're so fine, you're so fine, blah, 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 blah. Hey, Mickey. Yeah. Oh, she didn't do all that. I no, just added did, it. No, you did, Thanks for that, Alan. For my mam, Vicky, who is driving us home from Stratford after we've been to see Macbeth by the RSC, which was great. Ooh, mm -hmm. you see, we do have cultured people. Yeah, who want to listen to Hey, Mickey. Yeah. That's not that interesting? Yeah. <laughs> well, here it is. By Tony Basil. Oh, I love it. It's brilliant. Woo! <laughs> Alan and Mel, I appeared on Noel Edmonds' Late Late Breakfast Show dressed as a kangaroo <laughs> and performed with Michael Barrymore and dancers from Top of the Pops and Genesis and Billy Connolly. Wow. Love the show. That's a great lineup. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, um, it yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, who, did was, who sounds like that? Proper DJs, yeah. not people, imposters like myself. No. Um, right, so um, I've got a shout-out here. Oh, well, it's sort of a strange one. I'm making a giant cupcake, <laughs> four foot tall, for my sister, and that's Sam in Durham. Well, Doesn't nothing, they say so, why? Nothing surprises me anymore <laughs> on this show. <laughs> Hi, Alan and Mel. I'm only 19, but one of my colleagues was the executive producer of Tiswas, and the Phantom Flan Flinger was his idea. To be honest, that doesn't mean a thing to me. Joe from Worthing. Oh, do you remember the Phantom Flan? No, Tis was was before my time. What? Don't stop it. It was! Was it? Yeah! Oh, yeah, it was I just... I was born in 1982, remember? <laughs> oh, gosh. They just threw pies all the time, and it would just come on randomly and just attack the presenters. It was just hilarious. It's a bit like what happened with Wendy Day. Uh, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Should be great on Tis was at the Phantom <laughs> Flan Flinger. <laughs> Oh dear, now Libby and Alan say, Hi Alan and Mel, enjoying the show in our caravan on Grindon Moor. Just had ostrich steak and salad. Enjoy your bottle of red. That's meant to be good ostrich. It's not meant to have much um, is it fat. Fat, fat? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I still it's fancy. It's just, just the sound of it, you know. Ostrich, just, yeah, no. Not into that. We've got a caller. Hello, Robin. Hello, good evening. Hi, Robin. 
Now, How you've, you? had, you've got a claim to fame, haven't you, Robin? Well, if you call it that, because you all mentioned to Cuddles the Monkey earlier on. Yes. Oh, yes. Brought back pangs of no- nostalgia, or is it pains of nostalgia? Oh, Robin. <laughs> um, I, for my sins, uh, during the 1960s, had the... Uh, I was fortunate enough to, to work at a firm in London called Harrods. And I was a buyer at Harrods, and one year, late in the 60s, we went on a, a buying spree. No, a buying trip, sorry, not a spree, a trip. Yes. Uh, to Blackpool, <laughs> um, which was a great event in those days, of course. It still and is. We went to a club called, I think it was called the Lemon Tree Club, from memory. Mm. Right. And um, there was a group of us having dinner there and having a few drinks, and there was a guy on stage who was a pretty, pretty up-together ventriloquist, it seemed. And he, was, he asked for volunteers from the audience. And I don't know why. I can't think why for a minute, but I got pushed forward. I, I, honestly, to this day, I can't <laughs> think why I got pushed forward. But um, I, was, I was pushed forward to this guy, and um, he sort of, the setup was that he put a pair of rubber ears on my head. And if you've seen me, Alan, I don't really need the rubber ears. But anyway, <laughs> he put the rubber ears on my head, and um, he put a schoolboy cap on my head, and then I had to sit on his knee, and uh, we did... And I guessed what he was aiming to do. So we did this vent act together, which was I was the monkey, supposedly, and he was the ventriloquist, and we actually brought the house down. Oh. So from that, from that, I am absolutely certain, because don't forget, you just said you were born in 1982. We're talking about 1969. Uh, so we think that was when Cuddles the Monkey sort of came out of that, and then from that came Orville. Horror, horror, horror. So you, really, are the inspiration for Cuddles? I think I was, yeah. Really? Oh, God. Yeah. Are you thinking of maybe taking um, Keith Harris to the small claims court? <laughs> well, I tell you what, I tell you what, there'll be no comeback. No, well, what do you mean? What, you can't... <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, well, I get it, yes. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Can you get, go and say to me, I ate that duck? I ate that duck. <laughs> you see, there wasn't a duck then. It was only there was nobody, only cuddles. Oh, yeah, there was no duck. The duck came later. So I without think. you, there would be no Orville. Um. So you're okay, the one to blame. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I see where you're coming from. Yeah. Yes, I'm not happy about this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Robin, that is wonderful. I can't believe that. That's it's absolutely true. It is absolutely true. And um, that was probably 68, 69, I think, um, from memory. <laughs> but uh, it is absolutely true. And Keith Harris will no doubt substantiate that if you can find him. Yeah, well, I will, well I'm going to track him down. He's not missing, is he? He's not missing. <laughs> yeah. well, well, he has gone a bit quiet, right? hasn't he, on the old TV front? Yeah. Yeah. But you well, know I'll what, Robin? I'll tell you what, the ventriloquism... Vent- ventriloquism <laughs> That's easy for you to say. <laughs> Did you see Nina Conte last night on the uh, on Rob Brydon's show? Oh, she is the brilliant. Monkey. She is amazing. Oh, fantastic, I didn't see absolutely it. Absolutely fantastic. Oh. Um, She's breathed yep. new life into it all, hasn't she, and everything. Yep. So it's a long way from Archie Andrews. Well, now you have lost Mel. On me. <laughs> You've even lost Mel, and she was born in 1932. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Robin, have a lovely weekend. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. And uh, thank you so much. Take care. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, it's dear amazing. Me. We've met the inspiration behind Cuddles. Oh, who'd have thought that would happen tonight? Amazing. I hate that duck. <laughs> I actually preferred Cuddles, to be honest, over all of No, Cuddles was scary. He won, like he won said, a looker. No. Orville was cute. Yeah, well, Cuddles, I suppose. Um, he, he was... But when he had that, when he his then... face went in on himself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Emu used to do that before he attacked. <laughs> yes, he did, yes. Yeah, yeah, and those goggly eyes. Yeah, like we are saying, a lot of the things... Like, we were watching that clip of Banana Skins. Uh, They're terrified. Banana Splits, Banana Splits. Banana Splits. And they were really frightening. Yeah, that one with the massive teeth and the glasses. Hey, stop it. <laughs> No, there was a there was a clip that looked like our webcam. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes! If you don't know what we're talking about, go on YouTube and put on banana splits, and you might as well just watch that with the sound down. It's the same thing. Um, <laughs> Vince has been in touch. He says, "Can you play Virginia Plain by Brian Ferry?" Uh, it begins with a deceptively quiet introduction, followed by an instant increase of volume as soon as the vocals come in on the first verse. 
This being, a tra tra apparently being a deliberate ploy by Brian Ferry to trap unwary radio and club DJs. Oh, let's have a listen. Play it, love. Oh. Oh, I see, and then it comes in. I'm still not perplexed. <laughs> oh, let's see. Name Virginia Plain. Oh, that ended quickly. Yeah, that's gonna upset that man DJs. Didn't say that, did no, he? he forgot that bit. He wanted mm. to catch you out. Uh, my hubby is six foot five and just as wide. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> <laughs> and is terrified of wasps. If you have one in the house, I have to lock him out of the room while I deal with it. <laughs> Still, I love him. His name is Sean, and we are in Sunny Stoke. Loving the show from Audra. Well, you can understand it because he's quite a big target, isn't he? If, yeah. if he's six foot by six foot, he's going to get stung. And I remember my mum saying, just pretend to be a flower. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it all went wrong. I know, that's when it started. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're talking about um, ninja mums. Yes. A player started swinging for me on a football pitch and I missed. But I looked round to see my missus, Sam, legging it on to defend me <gasps> and my dad running after her to make sure she was OK. <laughs> Luckily, it all stopped before she reached us. This is Aaron, 35 from Weymouth. So maybe me and Alan crossed paths when we were kids. You both crack me up. Oh, lovely. Right, well, um, we've come to the end of the show. Um, we're not going to do karaoke um, today. Uh Instead, we're going to finish with an Amy Winehouse track, Tears Dry on Their Own. Uh, I love this track. And uh, I guess we'll see you all see next week. See you next week. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.